what I have learned after 40 years of uh, practical work as an urban practitioner is to develop an allergy for three phrases. That is uh, comprehensive, holistic and integrated. <laughs> that is why I have uh, very randomly chosen three topics for presentation. One is urbanization, second is land, and the third is metropolitan government. This is a 1924 quotation from Mahatma Gandhi. And the notion there of exploitation is very significant. And it still lingers in many ways, as I would uh, explain very soon. Then we jump by another 25 years and look at what the first five-year plan said about urbanization. The important thing it said was the disgraceful side presented by the Ahatas of Kanpur and Bastis of Calcutta. And why was it so disgraceful? Because the insufficient control over building activity and the state of municipal authorities. The municipal authorities have been generally indifferent to enforcing such bylaw regarding building and sanitation as have existed. And then they said that the municipalities had no resources. Nothing much has changed on this. But look at the perspective around 50s, that the problem of cities was seen as that of slums on account of lawlessness and also on account of inability of municipalities to uh, perform. We, we go to 11th five-year plan and see what it says, that it identifies the significance of cities and urbanization in the economic development of the country. Now this has been said many times back, I think Rakesh quite forcefully tried to say that in 82 itself, but it has reflected in the five-year plan in these many words. And what it also says that the city should be livable, inclusive, bankable, and competitive. Now whether bankable is also a objective in the JNE new RM is a matter of integration, but I won't belabor on that. The, what these kind of progression has led to is a set of axioms which has guided the urban planning process in India. The first three are in a way reflections of the exploitation theme. Within metropolitan areas, the large cities or, or within the urbanization, large cities exploit small cities. Within the city, South Delhi exploits, exploits the rest of the Delhi or South Mumbai exploits the rest of the city. The physical planning, because of some of these axioms, has been guided by the presumption that cities need to organize and expand in a clearly delineated, self-contained neighborhoods. This notion still exists though not amongst planners, but uh, at a large, that it still exists. The another assumption or, or, or the axiom is, plans once approved will get implemented. Uh, health and safety norms will be enforced. And for achieving urban policy objectives, public ownership of land is necessary. Whether it was Chandigarh, Gandhinagar, Navi Mumbai, Bhuvaneshwar, or many of the uh, cities that have been there. The real problem is that none of these axioms are valid. And, and one needs to really look at what are the new ways of handling urbanization. And unless one gets over these axioms, there's going to be a problem. So this is one of the challenges, that in the process of urbanization and dealing with urbanizations, how can you get rid of these axioms and create new notions of what urban planning and management is all about. I quickly move to land, because this is again a very significant area in terms of what happens in cities. There was a saying which said, sab bhumi gopal ke, that means land belongs to the god. Or there was a saying that all land belongs to the crown, that the king owns the land. It reflected in the legal uh, things, the land revenue courts of most states talk about land holders and not of land owners. So, so you hold the land at the mercy of the state. And that is reflected in the way in which compensation is defined in the Land Acquisition Act, etc. Et we again move to how constitution looked at 
uh, things. It first said to acquire, hold, and dispose of property is a fundamental right when the initially constitution was uh, enacted. What therefore it also presumed that if state wants to take over land, it has to pay a compensation which is related to market. But soon this was changed. The word compensation was substituted by amount and you could take away land at amount. And there are many legislations which provide for that. The extreme example was of course 1976 Urban Land Selling Act which said that uh, any land in excess of 500 to 1500 meters west in government and the maximum you will get is 10 rupees a square meter. This act remained until 1999 and in some states up to 2008 and then it was uh, removed. The fundamental right to own property has also been deleted and has been substituted only by a legal right as it uh, remains. What has happened in, at the city level, the Rain Control Act, for example, has land use planners and development controllers. Some people would like to call them as permit traders, but uh, they, are, they are there. And operators of variety of li licenses and NOCs. NOC stands for No Objection Certificate, those who are not familiar with this language. Now, in this kind of a situation, this type of human resources are not suitable for managing metropolitan scale of operations, both in terms of planning as well as in terms of uh, delivering infrastructure. <coughs> the problem with MPCs as constituted today are quite serious. In fact, I have heard the author of that uh, amendment uh, performing shraddha of that. Shraddha means rituals performed at the, at the time of the death of a person. So, uh, whether that structure at all is going to work, because this MPC concept was put into constitution in 1992, it has, some states have agreed and legislated something, but nothing much is happening. Now, in this I am saying, uh, being a member of the MPC of Mumbai itself, so uh, I don't think that is, that is the model which is going to work and that is a challenge. One of the problems is that the domain for metropolitan uh, governance is not clearly defined. And you find many metropolitan authorities are performing functions which are legitimately performed in the, by the local authorities themselves. And if you want to avoid that, then clearly that needs to be defined. And I've listed few. Long-term spatial planning, I think the regional land use planning which was mentioned yesterday. I have used more fancy words because people like that. But you could substitute that by our regional land use planning also. Metropolitan transit planning, I think that is very critical because uh, transit can't be uh, addressed at the local municipal level. It has to be addressed in a metropolitan scale. Water source development, because in many cases, the water resources that are developed have, have to be shared amongst municipalities and if it, it is not equitably done, then there are problems. Regional waste disposal, because uh, now the scale of waste disposal is such that it cannot be accommodated within the municipal area alone. It has to be arranged on a bigger scale and depending upon the geography of the area, perhaps the regional drainage as well. So the challenges are to define the need first of all to add the metropolitan governance then define what is the domain for that entity, what will be its structure, what are its processes, and what are its human resource requirements. Thank you.